Welcome to Out Motorsports, the channel for cars as you are. My name is Jake, and this is the 2022 Nissan Pathfinder Platinum. Now, we're gonna go through what this 2022 Pathfinder is. We're also going to be towing with it because it has a substantial enough tow rating for this class of vehicle. It can tow 6,000 pounds according to Nissan, so of course we have to test it. Now, let's get right into what this 2022 Pathfinder is. Before we do, if you like this video and like what we're doing, make sure to like the video itself and subscribe to the channel right here on YouTube. Now with that, on to the 2022 Pathfinder. Now Nissan claims that this 2022 Pathfinder is a powerful return to its rugged roots. So this is a new styling direction, it is a new design for the 2022 model year, but it is not an all new vehicle. Underneath it is riding on the same platform that underpinned the outgoing fourth generation Pathfinder. It's called the Nissan D platform. It's not like the platform needed to be replaced necessarily. Nissan can always evolve things as they want, as does every other automaker, so it's on the same platform as the old one. Now of course, when they want to evolve the platform and do new things underneath this nice new sheet metal, what did they do? Well, they kept the same drivetrain going on, but mercifully, they got rid of the continuously variable transmission. The CVT is no more. We are very happy about that. Engine-wise, you're getting the same 3.5 liter VQ35 DD. It's a direct injection version of the VQ35 V6. A variant of that has been around forever at this point. It's a very good V6, and it makes 284 horsepower and 259 pound-feet of torque. I mentioned that flows down to the ground through something that's not a CVT, finally. I some companies have really been on the CVT thing for a while now, and people just don't necessarily like them. They don't necessarily work. They end up programming in fake gear changes, which defeats the whole point of a CVT, and I just can't handle it. But regardless, the CVT is gone. It is dead. It is not in this Pathfinder at all. Whether you get front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive, you get a ZF 9-speed torque converter automatic. Thank you, Nissan. Beyond the transmission, I mentioned front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. Like I said, this platform underpins a lot of front-wheel drive and front-wheel drive-based Nissan products. So you can buy this Pathfinder as a front-wheel drive vehicle. Of course, most people are probably gonna buy them as all-wheel drive. Nissan does have some new stuff going on up their sleeve with the all-wheel drive system. It has a bunch of different drive modes. You get up to seven different drive modes, four different off-road type scenarios if you get the higher trim levels of the 2022 Pathfinder. So moving around to the back of the Pathfinder, we have to talk about that tow rating. That's why we're here to make this whole video and see how this thing actually tows. Nissan, like I said, rates this Pathfinder to tow up to 6,000 pounds. However, the most basic Pathfinder S is only rated for 3,500 pounds. So how do you get the Pathfinder to tow 6,000? The answer is easy. If you get a fully loaded Platinum like I'm driving today, it comes with all the stuff you need for that 6,000 pound rating. If you get the SV or the SL trim levels, those are the two between the basic S and the top trim Platinum, you have to get the premium package on either one of those trim levels to get that 6,000 pound rating. And the reason is because Nissan adds a transmission fluid cooler as part of that package. That's what they do to add the 6,000 pound tow rating. Now, wheelbase-wise, the 2022 Pathfinder is unchanged from the outgoing model. It has a 114.2-inch wheelbase, so that is the distance from one axle to the other. That should be plenty of wheelbase to tow a trailer like one I'm pulling or a small enclosed trailer. If you've got a camper, a very small car trailer, something like that, you should have plenty of wheelbase to pull with. Now, the two other numbers that are very important for towing safely with a vehicle like this Pathfinder or anything, really, are the tongue weight that it's rated for and the payload that the vehicle is rated for. So tongue weight is how much weight you can have right here on the trailer tongue on the trailer hitch. And in this case, Nissan doesn't publish an official stated tongue weight that they approve, but if we're going off of the old Pathfinder, which is on the same platform as this one, they approved a 10% tongue weight at the time, which works out here to 600 pounds. So 600 pounds should be plenty for you. Obviously, we will be checking in with Nissan, and if we hear anything back after this review goes live, we will be sure to put it as a pinned comment in the comments and description down below. Now, the final number that is important, like I said, is payload. And what payload means is the total weight of the occupants of the vehicle, all of your stuff, and if you're towing a trailer, the tongue weight on the trailer hitch. Now, that's important because if you've got five or 600 pounds of tongue weight back here, you have to take five or 600 pounds out of the overall allowable payload for the Pathfinder. So let's take a look and see what this Pathfinder is rated for. I'll show you how. 
So it's important no matter what vehicle you're considering to actually look at the payload of the exact vehicle that you want to purchase. And that is because Nissan and all these other manufacturers will make a general claim about this is the payload for the Pathfinder. They might even say this is the payload for the Pathfinder Platinum if you want that trim level. But depending on the options that you pick, your payload could be different. So the easy way to do this is to just open the driver's door and take a look right here. Usually the sticker you're looking for is right under that driver's door latch. And what it's gonna tell you is your seating capacity. It's gonna tell you the tire uh, inflation number, the optimal tire inflation number. And then it's gonna have a little sentence that says the combined weight of occupants and cargo should never exceed. And there will be a number there. Now in this case, the combined weight of occupants and cargo should never exceed 1,148 pounds. So if we do some quick math here, 1,148 pounds, we'll take that 600 pounds of tongue weight. That means you've got 548 pounds of allowable weight in this Pathfinder. So that means your weight as a driver, any weight of your passengers if you have them, any weight of cargo behind that second or third row, that's all you get. So if you're looking to tow with a Pathfinder and you've got a Platinum, that's more or less where you're gonna be on payload. The lower trims of Pathfinder, because they tend to come with fewer options, thus less weight involved, might have a little bit more payload. So if you're really concerned about payload, check out the different Pathfinders on your dealer lot or take a look online and see what Nissan rates the other trim levels for. It's a good starting point. Now, with all that, it is very cold out. So I'm gonna get behind the wheel of this 2022 Pathfinder and see how it actually tows what we've got hooked up here. Now, what are we towing? We are towing my friend Dave's BMW 2002. It is a 1974 model year, and we're using a borrowed open trailer. This is a Big Tex brand trailer. It's 18 feet long with a wooden deck, and it weighs also about 2,000 pounds. So are we towing right at the limit of this Pathfinder? No, but 4,000 pounds, 5,000 pounds is gonna be more like what most people end up towing with these. Now, as we come up to this red light, the other interesting thing of note here, Nissan does not offer a built-in trailer brake controller. They do include wiring under the dashboard with a harness they give you, so you can plug in your own trailer brake controller if you're gonna to be towing with the, one of these Pathfinders. But in my case, this is not my vehicle. This is Nissan's, I don't wanna deal with wiring, so I'm using a wireless trailer brake controller. This is by a company called Takancha. It is a Prodigy RF, and this is a wireless brake controller that goes between the Pathfinder and the trailer. And I've just got this controller up here for the sake of setting my braking uh, strength, and then I've got the emergency brake button right here on the side. So that's just gonna chill in the cup holder. And like I said, the wiring is here if you want it, but otherwise you can use something like this. I will include the link to this down in the description below if you are interested in picking one up. All right, and away we go. So we are heading on to the highway. So away from the stoplight here, everything feels pretty good, of course. Now the VQ does make all of its power toward the top of the revs. I think peak power is at like 6,400, 6,500 RPM, which is right before red line indicated at 65 or 6,600. So you do have to wind it out. It makes peak torque a little bit lower around 4,800, but you're still gonna have to wind it out a bit to make all that power and torque and get some good acceleration. Now you do have paddle shifters on the steering wheel here, so that's not all bad. I am having to put my foot into it quite a bit. It's a little slow to rev, to be honest. Um, I'm wondering if that's just because of the gearing of this nine speed. It doesn't feel quite as eager to rev as the Kia Telluride that I had last week, but of course we are up to 60 miles an hour pretty easily. So you just have to be willing to put your foot in it a little bit. You do have the paddles here that you can use to control the transmission on your own. There is also a manual mode. If you slide the shifter back again, like you're in drive, you can go between manual mode and automatic mode. So if you wanna hold a gear for a long hill or something, you can certainly do it. Now, if I wanna put my foot down and pass a bit, gotta rev it, but if you're willing to get it, it seems to really pick up above like 4,000 RPM. Of course, you get to that torque peak. You're building toward that power peak. This is a naturally aspirated V6. It's a great motor, but you do have to rev it. It likes to rev. That's just kind of how the VQ is. So uh, it's doing just fine as far as power is concerned. You got to work it. Now, the nice thing I mentioned, the nine speed is, you know, a lot of ratios to have. 
better than the CVT. We're, we're all very happy Nissan keep doing that. No more CVTs. But the nine speed's a lot of ratios to deal with, especially on the highway. But the nice thing when you're towing, especially with a naturally aspirated V6 like this, having all those ratios is nice because it's one more option that the engine can use to try and get you right in that power band and you know feel really good. Now, tongue weight wise, you know, I'm using a trailer that offers a lot of space to move this BMW forward and backward on the trailer. And you do have to consider the fact that some trailers won't do that and you can be really tongue heavy, which is better than being too light, but you really wanna measure your tongue weight, especially with a vehicle like this. You know, if you're using a, a big diesel truck to tow, and you're towing a Miata with it, then sure, slam a bunch of weight on the tongue and you know forget about it. But if you're towing with anything else, you really need to watch your tongue weight. So in this case, the Pathfinder's not squatting at all. I'm not using weight distribution because we're not pulling that much weight. If I was pulling five or 6,000 pounds, I would want weight distribution. And Nissan does mention weight distribution in their towing guide with the Pathfinder among other vehicles that they sell. So they do appear to support weight distribution in some way. I'm really impressed with the ride quality with the trailer hooked up here. I think the Pathfinder is a touch stiff for my preference when it's unloaded. A lot of other reviewers have praised the ride quality in general, and I'm not saying it's bad or too stiff or over damped when it's unloaded. It's, it's fine, it's just a little on the firm side, but when you've got the trailer hooked up, it kind of comes into its own a little bit and it feels really good. It's not upset by any big bumps in the road or you know undulations where the road kind of gets wavy and, and maybe a little poorly maintained. It, it rides really well. Now I mentioned the Pathfinder is on the same platform as the outgoing Pathfinder, but what Nissan did is they retuned the suspension. So they changed the damper rates. So in theory, they, they made this handle a little better and be a little smoother and more comfortable everywhere, which like I said, seems to have worked out, especially when you've got some weight in the back and you're towing. And the weight on the back could also be replicated just by having a lot of people in here. So if you're carrying your family around but not towing a lot, you could still get the benefit of the retuned suspension with the 2022 Pathfinder versus the old one. The other thing that Nissan did with this Pathfinder versus the outgoing model is they increased the roll stiffness. So what that means, roll stiffness is basically the vehicle's tendency to roll the body through a corner. So they're trying to make sure that you don't have a ton of body roll as you take a corner. And they increase the roll stiffness by something like 28% in the front and 14% in the rear. So they upped it quite a bit and it definitely feels nice and composed everywhere, especially through corners. Um, I'm, I'm really pleased with how this is handling everything, to be totally honest. Now, away from this stoplight up to about 45 or so. Definitely feels really good. I, I am impressed with this for the sake of towing, especially at this kind of weight. I think if you're looking to pull four or 5,000 pounds, totally fine. I think if you're gonna pull 6,000 pounds, the Pathfinder will do it. You just have to be really prepared to rev it. I think the suspension is up to the task. I think the steering feels good. I think the brakes are good enough. Obviously, you wanna have a trailer brake controller no matter what, or make sure you've got good working surge brakes but uh, everything feels nice and controlled. You just have to be willing to let that VQ sing, but that's kind of what VQs are good at doing anyway. So I think this is absolutely worth your consideration if you are looking for a family vehicle, a you know, mid-size three-row SUV that can tow a decent amount of weight. The Pathfinder does beat out its rivals. I had the Kia Telluride last week, which is rated for 5,000 pounds versus 6,000 here. The Ford Explorer does not tow quite as much. It's like 5,600. The Honda Pilot is 5,000. The Toyota Highlander is 5,000. So Nissan does have the advantage here with the stated tow capacity. You just have to make sure you like the rest of the vehicle, of course, because you're gonna be spending a lot of time in it. And that matters as much or more as how well it actually tows based on what you're doing with this day to day. A couple other quick insights while I've got you not related to towing about this Pathfinder. I don't love the seats. I think the seats are firm, but in a way that's not the most comfortable. Um, they put some weird pressure on my body. I just don't think they're the best for tall people in particular. Um, I wish there was a bit of a deeper bottom cushion or a, a slide out or roll out thigh extender. That would go a long way in making these a lot more comfortable. Uh, sound system in here is by Bose. It is pretty good. You have to feed it good source material as with any 
premium sound system, but it sounds pretty good, good sound stage. I don't think anyone will really be complaining about the sound system in here. The one thing, and this is so nitpicky, and some of you are gonna just be like, why do you even care? But I care. Uh, Nissan has okay user interface design with all of their screens. There's the, the 12 inch gauge cluster screen, the eight inch or nine inch screen over here for infotainment. And they use this one font for everything. If you've driven a recent Nissan, it's the same styling and, and setup in here. But the width of the characters changes based on how long of a word they have to cram into the same length of, of space, how many pixels they have to fit something. And I'm just really bothered by that. Like, why, why do you have to do that? Why not just make the design fit for all these long words? So that's such a small nit to pick in the grand scheme of things, but it's like one of the first things I noticed. Um, you've got plenty of options for what you can manage here in your 12-inch your uh, gauge cluster screen. It's all uh, easy enough to look at and figure out. There's a heads-up display that's nice. Nissan does have Pro Pilot Assist, which is their driver assistance suite, and they claim it's got similar uh, software abilities to Hyundai's Highway Driving Assist, where it uses the GPS in the car to know what road you're on, and it will slow down for curves and help navigate things for you. In my testing so far, it has not been that impressive. It either works really well or it gets very confused. There's no in-between, uh, which I guess is what I would prefer. I'd rather just not work than anything, but it, uh, it, it has not been as good at lane centering in particular, and it seems a little over eager to slow you down uh, if you're in traffic or approaching traffic at all. It gets a little over cautious. And the other interesting thing that you wanna be just aware of here this is such a feel thing, and again, this is personal preference more than anything, but I noticed it especially coming out of the Telluride into the Pathfinder back-to-back, -back, very noticeable. The dashboard in this car and the door panels, everything is a little high. The seating position can feel a little bathtubby, if you will. And it's just, it's kind of how a lot of new cars are these days. Um, so that's a personal preference thing, just like the seats, just like the styling, there's a lot of, you know, subjective stuff here, but be sure to spend some good time test driving a Pathfinder along with anything else you test drive. Don't just do a five mile test drive and say, oh yeah, I'll buy this, because you need to make sure things like this are okay with you. If you, if you like how this all fits with your body type and your height and your size and everything, great. For me, I would prefer a little bit lower dash and, and just everything to feel a, a touch more airy everywhere. It is, beyond that though, it is, it is very nice in here. It's very quiet, which I really appreciate. Nissan's done a lot to keep noise down. The other thing that you might notice with towing is you don't hear the trailer hitch banging around in the receiver that much. And I appreciate that because with a unibody vehicle, it can be really tough to, uh, to isolate that noise. And they've done a pretty decent job of it here. So kudos to Nissan for the quietness of the cabin in particular. All right, and that is it for this towing review of the 2022 Nissan Pathfinder Platinum. Thank you so much for coming along today. As always, if you like what we're up to, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you wanna see even more of all of this and fun with cars on the racetrack and everything in between. And if you'd like to connect with us on other social media, we can be found on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, at Out Motorsports. We're also on TikTok, and I don't really know what to do with it, but we're over there. And if you'd like to connect with other LGBT automotive enthusiasts, please head over to outmotorsports.com. We have a whole community over there and we would love to get to know you. In the meantime, please stay safe, be well. We'll see you again soon.